Sup, ponies? I can't believe he really did that. He took that piece of crap he calls a rifle and just flew away. That featherhead. While I was sleeping. Hey, LP, if you're listening to this, shove that rifle up your ass. The radio paused a moment. The feminine voice that had been talking didn't seem sad or worried. Just angry. All right, ponies, show must go on. DJ Good Stuff here, and you're listening to Radio 52. At least until I collapse because a certain pony left me here all alone with a show that's never supposed to stop. Okay, new rules. I'll be airing during daytime. And only then do you get music during the night. Because I'm not a mortal and I need to sleep. And if any pony wants to drop by and do some talking while I'm asleep, just knock on the door. You know where we are. The sound of paper shuffling filled another pause. All right. Remember that I can operate the damned software radio too, so don't stop sending news, especially regarding the situation in Ironworks. And speaking of news, the memorial has been deserted and the ponies are moving north towards Broccoli. All the caravans still moving between Broccoli and Emerald Shores should head north and try to reach Rust Manor. I repeat, head north towards Rust Manor. Do not stop at Broccoli because it's too close to the war zone. I hate giving the news. If anything else comes in, I'll let you know. Otherwise, you'll get music all day long. Remember, music means no news, and no news is actually good news. Have some angry music, because I'm angry, and give Lonesome Pony a buck in the head if you see him. Day 12. Time. Approximately 4 a.m. Location. The Memorial. Northern Picnic Area, Big 52, South Branch. In the distance, ahead of Puppy Smiles, stood another little town. Little more than a group of shacks built around a very large statue that depicted a group of ponies hoisting an equestrian banner. The marble monument was remarkably well conserved. Its enormous size made it possible to see from even several kilometers away. On her way south, the filly met several groups of ponies with carts loaded with everything. She tried to socialize with them, but they simply kept moving, mostly ignoring Puppy, except for a couple of foals who waved back from a cart. Entire families were fleeing, leaving their homes and trying to reach safety behind the walls of larger and better guarded settlements. The filly was now staring at the monument with a puzzled expression. Ah, uh, Mr. Voice, are we near Dad's place? Analyzing. Actual position is Equestria. Fallen Soldier's Memorial, Northern Picnic Area. Location of your male parent is currently unknown. Puppy tilted her head, studying the surroundings. Yeah, I remember this place. That big road sign with the Pinkie Pie face and... The foal left the road, galloping over a low hill to find herself in the middle of a group of tables and rusty abandoned barbecues. This is Dad's place. Dad is near. Let's go. Philly and Yellow galloped further away from the road, heading towards a group of hills in the west. The low hills were still far from here, approximately four or five kilometers away from the memorial, but even at this distance it was possible to see that they were dotted with white stones, each spaced evenly apart. As she ran towards the distant hills, Puppy passed a dead tree. Once upon a time it must have been a proud oak, but now it was left was just a blackened skeleton its trunk scorched and its branches bare. I want more apple pie. The grass was green and birds were singing among the leaves. The sky was blue and everything was nice. Don't eat too much, puppy. We still need to get to Dad's place, remember? If you eat too much, you'll get sleepy and you won't be able to want to be sleepy when visiting your dad, right? Mom, he's never there. We went a lot of times and he was always away. Will he be there this time? I... I don't know, puppy. But you can leave him flowers, so he'll find them and know that you love him. Okie dokie. A couple of colts chased each other, disappearing behind a hill. There were ponies playing and ponies having lunch. Every pony was having a good time. I got a better thing this time. Luck! Oh, but puppy, that's a toy of yours. 
Are you sure you want to leave it here? Yeah! So when Dad comes back, he can play with it. It won't be lonely. Besides, he'll return it to me when he comes back home again. The distant sound of laughter filled the silence between mother and daughter. Mom, why are you crying? The filly stopped for a moment, looking at the big tree and trotting around it. She could clearly remember having a picnic in this place not earlier than the spring. Where had everything gone? Oh well. She knew that trees sometimes lose their leaves because Mom had told her so, and since there wasn't even grass on the ground, it was just fitting. The filly trotted away towards the cemetery. Day 13. Time, approximately 6 a.m. Location, Inter Equestrian 52, War Cemetery. Big 52, South Branch. The tombs were all similar, consisting of a small marble stone on which were engraved a name, a date, a cutie mark, and a few short words. Some stones were white while others were black, but when Puppy asked to her mom why, why they were different, she simply replied that ponies napping there were more important than the others. Puppy didn't like that reply, since Dad was a very important pony, but he only had a white stone, so she decided to bring him some more flowers, just to show him that he was super duper the best dad ever. Warning. Receiving distress signal. Source. Location. 200 meters. Signal identified. Device 09. Warning. Receiving new distress signal. Distance to the source. 250 meters. Signal identification. Device 020. Puppy tilted her head. Confused. Ah, uh, what? New radio music? I hope it's not like the last time when there was just a stupid pony and this is saying, help me, we're doomed, and all the silliness. Negative. These are Ministry of Peace distress signals from other Mark V suits. Receiving a signal on distance 230 meters. Identification device 013. The Philly sighed. Look, if it's not music, I don't care. Let's go find my dad. Maybe he's back and we'll go find mom together. With those words, the foal headed towards the low hill with the statue of an alicorn on top. The hill was surrounded by a metallic fence with several marble arches that led inside the area of the cemetery. A large main battle tank stood in front of the arch Puppy was going through, a brass plaque in front of the war machine explaining that this part of the graveyard was buried fallen soldiers from the 3rd Armored Company, Steel Flanks. There was also the commemorative words and a brief statement that explained how tanks nowadays weren't widely used on the front because of the new technological breakthroughs, and that this decommissioned machine had been left here to safeguard its sleeping brothers. The filly in yellow had been here more than once, so she little knew where to go and headed towards a specific grave, seeing that the place was deserted. Puppy sighed and sat in front of the white stone. The cutie mark of a couple of keys was engraved on the marble structure, together with some writing. Captain Better Days, tender husband and caring father, beloved by his wife Rainy and his daughter Puppy Smiles. And the date was almost unreadable, but it didn't matter much to Puppy, since she was mostly interested in the grave itself. On the small mound sat an empty vase with a couple of plastic figures. The vase once contained flowers, but now it was just filled with murky water and covered in mold. But the plastic figures still stood on the grave, looking back at Puppy. They were two molded plastic ponies. Like these, they were part of cereal boxes. The first figure was a miniature Pinkie Pie, while the other was of Rainbow Dash. Puppy sighed. He didn't take them. Why he never takes what I leave here? I was sure he loved Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash. Touching the plastic blue Pegasus with a hoof, the filly continued. Stupid Dad. If he was a little more at home, Mommy could be happy. Oh well. Mom explained plenty of times that it was okay if he didn't come home, and that she wasn't mad at him. And the filly wasn't completely convinced, but something in her mother's eyes told her that she had to just accept that explanation. From the day Mom got angry because Puppy didn't want to come home until Dad came back with them too, the foal decided that she didn't want to see her mother cry and scream like that. 
so she decided to play along and leave something in this place every time she came here, hoping that one day Dad would realize that she and Mom still loved him, and maybe he would finally come back. Puppy cleared her voice and stated, Everything. Warning. The inventory management spell is not devised to operate more than one object at a time. Opening fast inventory scrolling by alphabetical order. State next when you have finished examining an object and need to move on. State stop or exit when you want to close this application and restore usual inventory management program. An ashtray floated in front of Puppy. Next! Another ashtray appeared. Next! Yep, ashtray. Next! Again, an ashtray. Next! Did I say that puppy usually scooped up every single shiny object she found in her way? This was going to take a while. Day 12. Time. Approximately 7 a.m. Location. Inter Equestrian 52 War Cemetery. Big 52, South Branch. Next. The twentieth fork was stowed back into Puppy's bags, and the sorry, dripping remains of Fuzzy Ball floated in front of the foal. N no wait! Fuzzy! Grabbing the dead Parador cub, the disgusting green goo oozed from the cracks of its carapace. The dead creature had lost all of its legs and only had a single wing left, while the eyes at some point started to decompose and were just another glossy, rotting detail on the thing. You don't seem very healthy today, Fuzz. What happened? Puppy studied the dead creature for a moment, trying to determine what was wrong with it. Ah, uh, Mr. Voice, is Fuzzy Ball ill? Negative. Fuzzy Ball is deceased and in an advanced state of decay. Puppy smiles frowned. She had learned from experience that Typical's words usually weren't good news. Ah, uh, that means that she's, uh, very tired, right? Negative. This means she is falling apart. Losing pieces. Deteriorating. What? The filly cocked her head, alarmed. Losing pieces? Mudfuzz needs her pieces to be okay. She gave a second look at the dead creature. Besides, it seems to me she doesn't lack any pieces. Advise. Check twice. The creature has lost three wings and all of its legs. Moreover, the carapace is rotting, and is broken in several places, due to the poor condition in which it was transported. Transported? You mean that Fuzzy's getting worse because I'm taking her along with me? But that's terrible! This is the chance that even the automated voice with no real intelligence could be able to exploit. Affirmative. The corpse is decomposing faster, mostly because you insist on taking it along. Abandoning the corpse immediately is highly recommended. Puppy hesitated. Leaving Fuzzy here? But she'll be all alone. There's nothing here, there's only... The fool stopped talking, looking straight at her father's grave. Ah, uh, maybe Dad could take care of her. The fool didn't seem enthusiastic about this idea. Still, it seemed so obvious. Elaborating. Leaving a dead pet in the custody of a deceased parent is... Error. It cannot compute. Please reformulate. Reform me late? What are you saying, you silly voice? I'm trying to be serious here. Re elaborating. It is impossible to identify a logical pattern. An external counselor is strongly advised. Puppy snapped, starting to lose her legendary patience. Stop talking nonsense. Call me some pony more competent or we'll end up arguing again. Philip put her hooves on her helmet as if she was rubbing her head. Really? Living with you can be a pain sometimes. Watcher's metallic voice interrupted the full machine quarrel. Puppy? What are you doing in this place? It's dangerous. Turning towards the voice, the filly in yellow found a sprite bot floating to her left. But this time, she couldn't smile at him. Oh, it's you, questioner. Watcher. Whatever. This isn't a good moment. Could you come back some other time? The voice hesitated before replying. Sure, but I wanted to warn you. This place is not good for you. It's filled with, uh, bad things you mustn't see. Please, before I go, promise me you'll get away from here immediately. Puppy snorted in frustration. 
I can't. I need help with Fuzzy Ball, but Mr. Voice is not helping at all. With these words, she showed her dead parador to the sprite bot. Uh, but that thing's rotting. No, please, what is that? Don't tell me, puppy. Puppy, throw that thing away. What? But Fuzzy Ball is my very best friend. I love her, and she loves me, and we're having lots of adventures together. I don't want to abandon her. The fool hesitated, looking away. But... But... Crest Watcher, since Puppy didn't seem eager to end the sentence and still hug the corpse. But she's ill, and Mr. Voice says she must rest. I could leave her with Dad, but it seems wrong. I didn't even ask him if I could keep her, and... Your dad? You know where your dad is, and you're still trotting along through the wasteland? The robot's voice was growing with indignation. What kind of father could leave his... Watcher stopped abruptly. Finally, noticing the name on the grave that puppy was sitting in front of. Ah, fuck. This keeps getting better. The fool went on. I know that I should have asked before taking a pet with me, but... But... The filly sobbed. But I only wanted a friend to stay with me all the time. Not a weird voice that always tells me what to do, or a stupid chicken that comes and goes. Fuzzy never leaves me alone and keeps me company. We were having lots of fun together, and I protected her from the pet eaters, and sh... He never give her goes away, and... The filly paused, looking at the sprite bot. And now she's ill and losing her pieces. Mr. Voice says she has less wings than before. I'm not good with numbers, but it does seem that he's right. I don't want to leave her, but I don't want her to be ill because of me. I don't know what to do. Ah, uh, what did Mr. Voice say? Puppy snorted. Nothing. He's talking nonsense since I started tasking him. Then, he had this idea of letting Fuzzy stay here with my dad till she gets better, but I don't know if Dad'll like her or if he'll be angry and, well, I'm not sure Dad'll come here, because he's never here when I come, and even if Mom says he loves me, I can't figure out why he avoids me. The fool waved her hooves around, as if she couldn't stand, still while she was pressing her concern. So maybe he'll hate Fuzzy Ball, and then she'll be sad, but I can't take her with me because she's losing pieces, and losing pieces is bad! Watcher hesitated, trying hard to disentangle the knot of feelings of words that Puppy was bombarding him with. Uh, well, what if I take Fuzzy with me? Just put her in the Sprite Bot's cargo bay and I'll take care of the rest. Sound fair? Puppy tilted her head. Y'all make Fuzz feel better? Really? Sure, she can't get any worse anyway. I'll see what I can do. Now, please get away from this place. It's not good for you. With those words, a hatch opened in the sprite bot's side, revealing a space large enough to house the dead critter. The filly looked at the medical, uh, metallical stash, then at Fuzzy Ball inside, hugging your pet once more before she whispered her goodbye. Don't worry, Questioner's a good pretty pony, and you'll be better when we'll play again together. Kissing Fuzz goodbye through the helmet's glass, Puppy put the dead creature inside the sprite bot, the hatch closing almost immediately. Don't worry about her, little one. She's going to a better place. Now, let's move away from here, okay? It makes me a little sad. The filly nodded, looking at her father's grave. Lily! A plastic flower floated in front of her, and she put it on the ground before the marble stone. Sorry, Dad. I have to go. But next time I'll stay a little more, okie dokie. I'll come here with Mom. Turning away from the grave, Puppy smiled at the sprite bot. All right. I'm done. There was a pause before Watcher spoke again. You're a good filly, Puppy. The foal and the robot moved along the road and headed away from the cemetery, towards the memorial. The ponies on the... A large statue seemed to salute the fallen from across the distance, like an eternal link from those who had died, fighting, and those who were left, trying to win a war that in the end killed every pony. Day 13. Time approximately 7.15 a.m. Location, the Memorial, Big 52, South Branch. The Memorial was completely empty. While fleeing from the town, the inhabitants had taken with them everything that wasn't nailed down, and even a few nails that had come loose. By the time the two ponies 
and a sealed crate were flown in by way of Griffin. There was only dust and rust left to meet them. All right, we're here. Mr. White jumped down from the Griffin and was, was transporting him and stretched his legs. That was a long trip. The White Apple's leader tipped his black hat. You lot can go back to Sun City. The first mercenary Griffin nodded to the unicorn. Okay, boss. But are you sure you want us to leave? The stallion snickered, looking at their pony as he disembarked clumsily. Absolutely. This is family business. We just need to get here fast. Now, your work is done. The Griffin's expression was uncertain. Oh, don't worry about your pay. If I don't come back, my son will take care of the company. The winged lion shrugged and waved the others. All right, you heard the boss. Let's get out of here, lazy feathers. All three creatures took off the ground and headed north. While Mr. White watched the griffins flying away, Sagebrush dragged a heavy crate inside a small shack made of plastic sheets and large road signs, complaining all the way. We can't take the stuff with us, Uncle White. It's too heavy. Don't worry, Sage. I'm planning to make camp here and then move fast, scouting the area. She can't be very far. I still can't see why you decided to run all the way out here with me for company, when we could just simply call the guys. First, of all, we had to get out here fast, and we can't airlift all those ponies and equipment here. Moreover, Rust Manor is paying good caps for our mercenaries. I don't see why we should lose earnings. Mr. White tapped his chin, trying to find something else to add. Besides, we aren't going to face the wild herd. We'll just get the foal and head back. Easy peasy. Sagebrush shied. Did every pony ever tell you that you're weird? I know she saved our rums, but you already gave her a reward for that. I think this foal's retrieving mission is suicide. The stallion hesitated for a moment, his expression becoming thoughtful. Or do you know something that I don't? The White Hooves leader enveloped a pair of binoculars with a telekinesis, scouting the surrounding hilltops. Well, let's just say that I have a few questions here and there that seems that wherever the fool goes, things change for the better. This ghost must have some sort of lucky star watching over her, and I want to be there when the filly strikes again. There's a lot to gain from this story. Sagebrush waved a hoof, dubiously. And you say this because... Because I have a good feeling about it. The sniper face hoofed. Great. So we're following a ghost because you have a doozy. Why am I coming with you? Mr. White replied merrily. Well, because I'm your dear uncle and you owe me so many caps that you can't say no anyway. I hate my life, groaned Sagebrush. The white unicorn waved a hoof, asking for silence. Shut up! Some pony's coming from the hill. Get the rifle. From their improvised sniping position, the two ponies observed a solitary figure trotting in town. It was covered in a dusty mantle and carrying a long carbine on its back. The traveler's face was hidden under a hood, but from its neck hung a necklace of feathers and polished metal objects. Sagebrush lowered his rifle. Sighing in relief. Eh, it's just Farseer. Weird. What's that shaman doing so far in this desert? Mr. White trotted out of the shack, leaving his rifle behind. We'll find out soon enough. The unicorn galloped towards the newcomer and called out to him or her. Hey, you. This place is empty. The road heading south is dangerous. You should turn your tail south and head north. The hooded pony stood for a moment, looking directly at Mr. White, before taking off her hood, revealing the face of an old unicorn mare. Oh, you're already here. Very well. Now we just have to wait for the others. Day 13. Time, approximately 7.30 a.m. Location, the memorial outskirts. Big 52, South Branch. So, puppy, you never told me about that blue streak in your mane. How'd you get it? The sprite bot floated alongside puppy as they slowly made their way from the cemetery 
towards the memorial. The graveyard gates were just a few hundred meters behind them. Ah, uh, it was in Sun City. When Blue Voice told me all those meanie things, I don't remember very well, but at some point I went to sleep. And when I woke up, my mane was all fancy. I see. You went to sleep and woke up with your mane changed? And what did Mr. Blue tell you? Puppy sighed. I already told you that. He said I wasn't a robot and wanted to make a fool out of me. But I showed him that I was smarter. But that's an old story. Since now, we're friends. B beg your pardon? You're friends now? Didn't you kill him with a magpul shell? Puppy giggled. Of course not, you silly questioner. He's not a bully bot. He's just as stupid as a colt. But when we met again and Creepy Voice bullied him, he said he was sorry, even if he pretended to be grumpy. I know we're friends. C creepy who now? The tiniest shadow of concern stated dancing in Watcher's voice. Puppy tapped her helmet. You know, creepy voice. The one who lives in my head, talks weird, and does a lot of cool stuff, but's a jerk. After a long pause, the sprite bot replied, You mean Mr. Voice, right? Ah, uh, nope. Mr. Voice is a bit boring and talks nonsense. Creepy Voice is creepy, but cool. She does stuff like opening doors and spanking bully bots. From the robot speaker came a gasping sound. Ah, I get it now. It's an imaginary friend. Yeah, I remember something like that. Want some advice? Don't try blaming your friends for things you did. In the end, it turns against you. Bobby tilted her head a little confused. She didn't seem very imaginary. Ah, uh, okie dokie. Good, Philly. You always make me... Boom. Watcher disappeared in a blaze of fire, right in front of Puppy's eyes. The fool stepped back for a moment, trying to understand what was going on. Then she noticed a large, squat, metallic figure rolling over the top of a nearby hill. And suddenly, she knew her answer. Bully bots. Day 13. Time, approximately 8 a.m. Location, the memorial. Big 52, South Branch. Mr. White sat at a table inside of a shack while Sagebrush finished cooking the oatmeal. All right, Long Ears. So, when are these other ponies going to arrive? The mare shrugged, continuing to look outside the window. They should move by tomorrow evening. Many are coming. So much blood. Brush turned towards the farseer. Hey, old hag, we aren't going to fight. We're just here to get that foal and go back to downtown. I don't care about your crazy visions. White waved a hoof at his nephew in an attempt to make him be quiet. Ah, you do the cooking. I do the talking. I think we already agreed on that. Turning back towards the mayor, he went on. So, what did you see? Long ears closed her eyes. In my dreams, I've seen flames from the south, engulfing all in their path. In the blaze, a pink shade kept struggling, the flames dancing around her, and they seemed to die for a moment as she passed them. The mayor paused for a moment before continuing. As the fire continued to sweep north, the shade reached the end of the road and turned to darkness. Mr. White frowned. Darkness. What do you mean by that? A black wave that ran behind the fire, devouring it, but not before destroying everything. The mare sighed, and when the darkness devoured the fire, nothing was left. The whole road was just an empty, abandoned place. Well, that's boosting my motivation for sure, snapped Sagebrush. White, I say we go back to downtown and leave this fucking place? The white unicorn sighed shaking his head and ignoring his nephew. So, why are we here? Long Ears looked away from the window. To stop the fire before it destroys everything, and then reach the end of the road where the pink shadow does. Pink shadow, you say? Why does this make me think that you're referring to Lonesome Pony's ghost? The unicorn was still talking when a distant explosion got his attention. Artillery. Looking outside the window, Mr. White couldn't see an explosion, but it seemed to be quite distant. 
maybe seven or eight kilometers south or east. The wind didn't help. The White Apple's leader trotted outside, listening for any more noises, but it was hard to tell if the sound he'd heard was actually distant gunfire or simply his imagination working too hard. Well, I guess whatever it was, it's gone now. Let's get inside. A solitary figure was coming from the north, wearing a weathered duster and a leather hat. The unicorn whistled. Hey, you! This place is deserted. Go back to Broccoli. Again, the stallion's voice hesitated a moment as he recognized the newcomer. Ah, the old mummy. Molten Gold quickened his pace and smiled as he approached Mr. White. Look who's here. White, of all the ponies I expected to meet, you are the last one. What are you doing in this outpost? Checking to see if there's something worth taking? The unicorn frowned. Oh, I'd never steal your job, old mummy. No, we are... Checking on the situation of the wild herd. He paused for a moment, trying to read the ghoul's expression, but it wasn't an easy feat. So, what are you doing in this war zone? Some treasure hunting? The old grave robber snickered. Something like that. Let's say that I sent a package south without realizing how dangerous it was. Now I'm trying to put a patch on that mistake. This is something new. You being sorry for something? What happened? Are you getting old? To Mr. White's surprise, instead of replying immediately, Molten Gold turned his eyes away, looking south. Yes. But I don't want a kid to die because of me being the usual me. I have a foal to save. Slowly, Mr. White's expression of surprise changed to an amused smile. Until he patted the ghoul on his shoulder. Welcome to the club. Come in. We have oatmeal and a hot mare inside. Day 13. Time, approximately 7.45 a.m. Location. The Memorial Southern Picnic Area. Big 52 South Branch. Puppy galloped towards the big robot with the Rock of Destiny floating by her side. Stop breaking my friends, you stupid bully bots! On the other side of Puppy's reckless charge stood an old, rusted, but functional battle tank, with tracks, turrets, and everything else. A pony with a spiked mane was poking out of the turret hatch, taking his time as he stared at the solitary foal running towards them. Fuck the boss and his orders. We should hide in the south while we have a fucking tank. With this little baby, we're unstoppable. <laughs> hey, Gray Matter. The yellow thing's running this way. How about some shooting practice on a moving target? With a laugh, the pony retreated inside the tank and closed the hatch. A few seconds later, the turret rotated to aim at the approaching filly. Inside the tank, a pony with a spiked mane was snickering like mad. Come here. Come here, my little pony. No, wait! A mare, with her mane completely cut off, put a hoof on the gunner's flank. Let's try a different weapon. I want to see this one. Shut up, you cunt. The stallion began scolding the mare, but at the last moment he noticed the big red button she was pointing at. Oh yeah, yeah, I like it. Let's rocket it to the fucking moon. You two idiots, stop wasting time. More talking, or less talking, more shooting, snapped the driver, an earth pony stallion. The gunner snickered. Gee, you're such a whiner. Gray, here, look at this. In the meantime, Puppy got a little more than halfway towards her target. Now the big metal robot was near her. She could see it had a large bulky body with round head and a long nose. Oh, it was one of those carts full of teapots. Wait, they weren't bully bots, they were carts. The filly stopped for a moment, sitting down and pondering on the nature of that thing. Okie dokie, what did she know? Usually there were ponies on the carts, but she couldn't see anyone on that one. Moreover, it broke Mr. Questioner's robot. And this was typical bully bot thing, so the odds were that it was a bully bot and not a cart. But to be perfectly sure, she decided to go and ask. In a moment, from the top of the tank's turret appeared a trail of white smoke that rocketed towards Puppy at a ludicrous speed. It was like a big, funny firework. <laughs> Look! A cloud maker! Kaboom! 
The rocket hit just behind the filly, sending her flying towards the tank, and leaving her with a small heap no more than fifty meters in front of it. Puppy's helmet was gone, and the whole suit was peppered with holes. A thick curtain of pink mist was already forming around the foal, while the suit was ridding off its litany of damaged components. All right. He's a bully bot. Slowly, Puppy got back to her hooves, and looked at the large metal monster that now stood in front of her. Her helmet was still missing, and though the mist that was in her face was blurry and hard to identify, except for two burning pink eyes that shone in the cloud, making the whole thing glow with an eerie light. Yeah! Eat it, you yellow whatever! The pony with the spiked mane was laughing crazily when the mare hit him with a flank again, causing him to snap in anger. What now, bitch? Hey, Top Gun, I think it's standing up. What the fuck is that? Grey matter! Stop it! All right, the wasteland was full of weird things, and some of them could survive a missile in the face. But being trampled by a tank was a completely different level of overwhelming your enemy, and the raider was sure that nothing could live through that. The tank lurched forward on itself, aiming for the foal who was doing pretty much the same thing, but from the opposite direction. When the two adversaries were almost on top of each other, Puppy jumped in the air, grappling the vehicle's frontal plate with her hooves and pedaling in the air with her hind legs. It's on the tank! Lucky charm, go up and shoot it! The driver brought the tank to a sudden halt, trying to make the filly lose her grip, but the puppy managed to stay holding on. The gunner was thrown forward, dashing his head against the cannon's loading mechanism and knocking him unconscious. Don't worry, I'm on it! The mare levitated a submachine gun, and opened the hull's frontal hatch, finding herself directly in front of the struggling foal in the middle of the pink cloud. Say goodbye, critter! Puppy heard a voice in front of her, something pony-like, but she couldn't tell. But the filly immediately recognized with the hail of bullets that pierced her head and her suit at several points, destroying what little of her helmet had remained uh, managed to deform. Stop it, you stupid bully bot! A new surge of motivation gave Puppy the strength to haul herself completely into the tank's hull, just to look at the hatch that was rapidly closing again. Hey! You think you can keep me outside? I am Puppy Smiles, and I go wherever I want! The fool jumped on top of the turret, searching for something to hit with her faithful rock. Thick metal, some metal, still metal, a glass thing, crash, okay, more metal, an antenna, Smash, smash, smash. Done. A box. Ah, uh, a box? Okay, get ready for spanking. Puppy loved that line from Creepy Voice. It sounded so badass. Inside the tank, Lucky Charm was drowning in her own blood after breathing in the pink mist. Top Gun was still unconscious, and Grey Matter was trying his best to make the mare drink a healing potion. Every pony was simply too busy to worry about the foal on the tank's roof that was hitting a missile rack with a stone. This was more or less when Mr. White heard the big explosion. Day 12, 13. Time approximately 9 p.m. Location, Inter-Equestrian Highway, 52 War Center Mir Cemetery, 52 South Branch. It was only much later than three figures approached the grave, not saying a word. All of them wore Mark VI suits, like puppies but the ponies inside were a patchwork of rotting skin and bleached bones. In their burning pink eyes, there was no sign of intelligence. Nevertheless, they stopped to study the hoof prints in front of the marble stone and followed the trail like hounds tracking their prey. Footnote. Level up. Fifteen. New perk added. Hit the deck. What the fuck? I was sure I hit her. Your damage threshold against explosives is raised by twenty-five. Enjoy tossing grenades at your feet. 